So now that we have the idea about what the, how the track and hold differs from the sample and hold, uh, let's actually just kind of go into a demonstration like we did in the previous one of the same signal going out from the track and hold portion, not only to the filter, but also to the pitch of the oscillator. So I'm going to unpatch this temporarily. And I'm going to grab another cable over here off camera. I'm going to patch into my sample and hold out, which is actually my track and hold. I'm going to go into my multiple. And again, this is duplicating the signal three more times. And I'm going to take one of these and go into the pitch of my oscillator right there. And I'm going to actually go into CV2. And bring the CV2 level up. And then I'm going to take the other copy of my signal going in. And I'm going to take that and go to my low-pass filter. Okay, now that I have the basic patch set up, now I can go in and start to adjust my rate. I can adjust the level of low frequency noise going in. Or the high frequency noise going in. And if I want to throw another little curveball into this patch, I can even take another waveform from here, and since my LFO is actually in low frequency mode, I can actually patch that into my CV number 3 over here. And so this uh, CV can actually be added to the track and hold signal going into CV2. Then I can patch that in there. And right now, I don't hear any of that, but that's because my CV3 level is down, so now if I start to bring it up... So I actually have my saw wave going into my CV3. Right there. I can change the ratio of that if I want, so if I want to bring down less track and hold CV going in, I can bring it down here. Or I can bring up the level of my saw wave going in. I can slightly tweak the frequency of my filter. Or I can even change my waveform if I say, I'm kind of done with the saw wave. Let's try an inverted saw. Take that out. So then I get something a little bit more periodic, but yet random at the same time. At this point, it, getting, it might be getting a little bit hard to follow, so hopefully uh, you've been taking notes. Just kidding. Uh, but let's review actually what's going on here again. Just so I can keep track, because I'm starting to lose track a little bit in all this madness. Uh, okay, so we have the LFO sending our square wave to the trigger end of the sample and hold. In this case, it's going to be a track and hold because of the jumper setting. And then we're sampling random output from the noise module going into sample in here. And then our output from this section of track and hold is going to our malt right there. From the malt, that signal is being copied twice. So the first one is going to, I believe the pitch is what I patched first. Let me just verify that. Yes. It's going into CV2 here of our VCO. And then the second one is actually going to CV2 of our filter. There we go. Yeah. And then I threw an extra little curveball in there by taking an inverted saw 
and patching it into CV3. But that's not actually necessary, it was just kind of more for fun. And then I can just kind of adjust it to taste. Till I find something I like. Actually sounds a little bit better to me anyway. The resonance about the mid setting. So that's kind of what you can do uh, with track and hold. At least in combination with both uh, sending CV to the pitch of the VCO and pitch of the filter at the same time. And I'm sure that there's other combinations that you can sort of add to this mixture, but this is the mixture that I came up with. And I could, you know, get crazy and say, hey, I want to try my triangle wave going in. Just the rate of my noise. Maybe a little lower. And remember, it's backwards, so yeah, the further you go here, the slower the changes happen, and which you can see reflected by the light. But if I go this way, then my lights start to fluctuate a little faster. And then I can adjust the frequency up here. So the high frequency component of my noise and the low frequency component of my noise as well. Till I find something that I like. And at this point, I have a lot of options to kind of tweak the sound. I have my basic patch set up, and now I can sort of change dials here until I'm content with what I got. So we're getting some fairly interesting sounds going from here. And just as an experiment, um, let's actually try taking, let's see, sine wave, and actually let's do this. We've been doing saw wave all this time, let's try going to uh, square wave. Here we go. So our square wave is going into our filter. And uh, let's actually take another low frequency signal and patch that into our pulse width, just for a little extra variety here. There we go. There's some fairly different sounds going on. I could even take that out from the saw wave and maybe try a sine wave. All changed by this one dial now, so if I slow down. Can I adjust my CV level inputs. And I have one more cable, so let's try one more waveform. Why not? So we'll take a saw wave going out from here. And I'm going to patch that right into my lonely pulse width CV number two port over here. There we go. So we have almost every input of our oscillator f uh, filled, almost, minus CV1. Which if I had one more cable, I could do it. But this might be a little bit of overkill in this case, but we're just experimenting. 
And at this point, it's at that moment where you can kind of just adjust it until you're happy with the sound. You can even flip into my mid range. And adjust the level of my different CVs going in. So we have a lot, a lot of waveforms going in now. Square wave is probably still one of the most important because it's the one that's telling it how fast to change. And then we have, of course, our other waveforms, like we have our triangle going into CV3, and we have our sine going into pulse with CV1, and we have our saw going into, where is that going to? Pulse with CV2. So we got a lot of different changes here and a lot of variety with our sound, as well as a lot of ways we can change it by not unpatching or patching something new. We can just sort of adjust our random voltages, which is adjusting the uh, signal being sampled. Uh, we can adjust the, let's see, pulse width manually if we want to. Even though we do have a modulation going in here. We can adjust the frequency of our filter to get a slightly different sound. Or we can adjust the level of our CVs going in over here. Adjust the resonance. Lots and lots of possibilities. So that right there is kind of the maxing out of the track and hold type patch. Now I did say that uh, we would do a little bit of comparing what sample and hold does with track and hold. So I'm going to actually tear down this patch and then sort of demonstrate that. <laughs> 